helps to provide the feedback. Uh, our next session is uh, Shashani. Uh, he is a DBA at uh, Compass Education from Australia. And uh, he had a very interesting journey from, uh, you know, like uh, from salesman to, I think, a uh, DBA. And he had done a very long journey. So, yeah, I will not take much time uh, about him. So, maybe over to you, Shashani. Thank you, Asif. Thank you so much. Um, oh, let me start by sharing my screen. Yeah. Give me two seconds. Uh, two. <clears throat> there we go. I just want to start off by apologizing for my webcam. I know the quality is not that good. It's the best I could get. Uh, most of our webcams are not being shipped to Australia at the moment because of the whole COVID situation. So this is the best I could do in such a short time. Um, so welcome to my talk. Uh, the reason why DBAs just can't get over window functions. Um, to start off, just a little bit about me. Um, uh, my name is, uh, like I said, just Shane Wagama. Uh, for short, it's Shane. My friends call me Shane. I work at a business called uh, Compass Education. Uh, we make school education software for um, for schools, primary schools, and secondary schools um, in Australia and Europe. Um, I am a Microsoft Certified Solutions Associate in uh, SQL, SQL database development. And uh, like Asif mentioned uh, a few years ago in university, I used to uh, be a robotic room, Roomba salesman. And also, I was working part time as a level one service desk. And from there, I made the push to uh, database administration at uh, Compass. And I've been there for about uh, two years now. Um, so, yeah, that's just a little bit about me. And uh, yeah, I'm based in uh, Melbourne, Australia. So, <clears throat> I, I might uh, go through a few sections a bit quickly uh, just because I want to make some time for the uh, use case at the end. And uh, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll go through the important stuff, and hopefully the main goal with this presentation is by the end of it, I want we all, all of us to be like somewhat comfortable with the window functions, and how they work, and how we uh, and why should we use them, um, how can we make them you know run faster, how to perform, how to optimize them, and uh, just to understand how they actually work like um, with different. Uh, in different use cases. Uh, some of the use cases we'll be going through is like, uh, you know, removing duplicates from uh, data, uh, paging, uh, running totals, that kind of stuff. Um, the book that I have on the screen, let me get my pointer. Hopefully you can see that. The book that you have here on the screen is by It's It's Sig Benga. I used this as a huge learning material for myself. Uh, some of the demonstrations are from the book as well. So uh, if you guys want more in-depth analysis, do check out his, uh, this book. And honestly, I recommend a lot of material by it's like It's really great stuff, really, really educational. <clears throat> if I'm talking too fast or if you want me to slow down or uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, write in the chat or you know try and ask it, whatever. I'm happy to stop and answer. And I'll, I'll do my best to answer the questions. Right, so uh, we'll start with what are window functions. Um, basically, you can think of them as functions that are applied to a group or set of rows. Uh, so essentially, that group or set of rows is a window. And that's, we use the term window as like just the set of rows that give, that, that we can, that we apply that uh, function to. And when I say function, I mean it can be uh, some familiar ones like uh, max, min, uh, count, or it can be uh, some ranking functions like rank, dense rank. There's many different types of window functions. And um, depending on what you want to do, you can uh, use different ones. And they're all documented on Microsoft documentation. I won't go through every single one of them. I just want to get the idea across. And uh, we'll go through some uh, examples as well. <clears throat> so um, here I have, an I have a quick example of using the rank in a window function, the rank function in a window function. So the window function is actually is this whole statement right here. So this whole statement here is actually the window function. Uh, incorporates a function. So uh, this could be max, min, count, whatever. In this case, it's rank. And then it's followed by over clause. And in that over clause, you can have um, a few different inputs. Uh, generally three inputs. It's uh, partition by, order by, or um, rows or range. I'll get into that all in, in shortly. 
Uh, but this is a quick query just to show how the structure and the syntax of a of a window function. <clears throat> the overclaw is actually what you use to specify the window that we are operating on. And that will also make sense soon enough. Uh, quickly here I have a, a screenshot of um, of a, 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 a table from a Stack Overflow. It's just a random table. Uh, the main point I wanted here to show is that, like I said, the over clause creates a window for the function to be applied on. So essentially, whatever the over clause is, this re rectangle. Uh, was it on this screen that you guys lost me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Apologies again, guys. All right. I fixed my internet. Should be good now. Um, yeah. Sorry. So uh, with uh, this is quick. This is a quick uh, example of the over clause and how it creates a window. Uh, we'll move on. And something else actually I wanted to just point out, each row has its own window and that window is independent of other rows windows. So there's no overlap between the windows. That'll make more sense uh, within the presentation, uh, within the, the demonstration. Uh, elements of a window function. There's three elements generally for a window function, uh, partitioning, ordering, and framing. Uh, they are represented by the three inputs for the over clause. Uh, Partition by is for partitioning, order, order by is for ordering, as that makes sense. The row and range is for window framing. The row and range one is a bit tricky, so I'll show I'll showcase that better in a uh, demonstration, which comes very soon. Uh, partitioning data, uh, when we're using, you can think of the window partition as a filtering layer, so it's supported throughout all window functions. And um, so basically, you can act. You can think of it as grouping uh, records. Uh, if if you don't specify the partition by, the window is considered as the entire uh, result set um, because there's no window. That, there's no restriction to the window because you didn't specify a partition by. Uh, in this example here, I use there's two rank functions. So there's essentially two window functions. One, one with the alias of rank all, that's the fourth column, and one with the alias of uh, rank cust customer, which is the fifth column. Uh, what I'm trying to showcase here is how the ranking function operates when there is no partitions and when there is a partition. So the, the first case where there is no partition by uh, declared, there's no win, there's no, the whole result set is taken consideration. This result is actually about 830 records. I only showed 10 records here because I'm not going to show 830. Um, and you can see in that fourth column, the values are representative against the entire 830 columns, 830 rows. Whereas the final column is representative within the partition. So we partition by custom ID. Custom ID is one in this case. They're all, they're all grouped here. And we're given a rank to how they're placed with the order by by ordering the value descending. And as you can say, it's one one to six. And then when we go to the new partition, it's reset to one to four, right? Because that's a new partition because custom ID is now two, right? Um, ordering, I'm sure it's very self it's very uh, straightforward. It's you're ordering the data, uh, but just as a note, in aggregate, when you're using it for aggregate functions, it's not exactly that straightforward. It's more of a helper for uh, window framing, which acts as another filtering stage, but that all makes sense with the demonstration, which will be very shortly. Uh, Windows framing, again, you can think of this as the secondary filtering layer for the window function. Uh, basically, you have a window that's defined by the partition by clause, and then in the partition by clause, you can have uh, more restriction of rows. That's you can think of it as a frame. So a frame is within the uh, window of the within the window, and that's the syntax of it. But right now, instead of just showing screenshots, let's get into it. Um, here we are. Let me just take care of this. Yeah. Okay. So this table here. It's a very simple table, three columns, name, sex, and salary, and there's 16 records. Now, um, and you can see that there's, uh, it's yeah, it's very straightforward, nothing much to be explained about that. 
uh, finding the running totals and group them by sex. That's the task that we have to do uh, for this result set. So to find the running totals, I would like to you know, add up uh, the records one by one after, this, after each other. So I'll use sum. So what I do is I write a query, select name, sex, and salary. Okay, three columns. I put sum, I use that for the window function. I add salary as the column I'm trying to do aggregations on because I'm trying to find the run, because I'm trying to find the running total for salary. And then I uh, order it by uh, I order the data by salary as well. Now you can see in the data set I have a fourth column that's uh, that's derived from the window function called running totals. So you can see in the first record it makes sense, right? Saman, male, salary is 1,000, running, to running total is 1,000. All right, that's, yeah, that's normal. Then Dostal, male, salary is 2,000, running total is 5,000. That doesn't make sense, correct? Because the running total should be around 3,000 now, but we have been returned with 5,000. If we go to the third record, Chintan, salary is 2,000, running total is 5,000. That's correct, because 1,000, 2,000, 2,000, 5,000, right? So why is DOS still 5,000 as well? Well, it actually, it's due to the fact that this is, this is actually due to framing. There is framing applied here, even though we didn't use the row or range clause in this query. Because when you write a query like this, a funeral function like this, there is a default value given to the row or range clause. And that is this range between unbounded preceding and current row. That's the default value. So if I run both these, you can notice, you'll notice that both uh, result sets are the same. There's no difference. That's because they're the same query. This one of them, the default value, you just don't see it. Um, so what does that mean? Um, the range between unbounded preceding and current row. Range, the keyword here, the main difference from using range and rows, right, is that range treats duplicated records as one entity. So it will treat the salary value 2000 of Dostal and of Chintan, which is 2000 as well. They're both seen as by SQL Server as one entity when you use range, right? Now, it so. The highest computed value, which is 5,000, because when you do 1,000, 2,000, 2,000, it's 5,000. That value will be shared between the two uh, duplicated values. Because the, uh, using range, SQL Server sees the data as um, one entity. Essentially, that's what's happening here. So how do we fix that? Because obviously, this is wrong. If you're creating a query for reporting purposes, or you know, it's incorrect. So how do we go about fixing it? you use rows. Rows, when you use that keyword, instead of range, what happens is each record is seen as a unique record. It's it's not taken, even if it's duplications, it's not taken as one entity. So if I run this, if I run uh, just this query with the, so I'm taking, the only difference is I've removed range and applied rows. So you can see now, when we do the running total, as we go down, it's it's absolutely correct. Dostal is 3,000, 3, Chintan's 5,000, Dev is 8,000, and that's correct. As we go down, it just keeps adding on. So now we're, we have created a running total. So we've done like the first half of what we had set out to do because we're trying to find the running total and then group them by sex. So how now we do the second part. Now to, gr now to group them by um, sex, sorry guys, give me two seconds. <clears throat> Sorry about that. We have to uh, use the partition by clause. We haven't used partition by earlier, right? That's why the running total just keeps going throughout all the records. Because like I said before, if you don't put partition by, the whole result set is seen as one window. So now we want to actually create a uh, grouping for the, uh, for the column sex. So we then we use the partition by clause, right? So we write this query here, we partition by sex. Now you can see the partition by clause has created these windows, one for female, one for male, 
and one for other on the bottom here. Right, but now again, I forgot to put in uh, rows between unbounded precedent and current row because if we don't specify, it's range. And that's why you can see for seven and eight, salary 2000 is uh, 5000 for both, which is not ideal. Um, so here I've added the uh, proper value for framing. And now you can see that in these uh, windows, the running totals are going as expected. And when we come to Rashmi, here is the last record in the female uh, window. When we go to Saman, you will notice that the running totals have been reset to Saman salary. And that makes sense because now we're looking at a new window, right? The windows are independent of each other. So you can now start to see some analytic purposes for window functions. But I hope I hope it's a good showing so far. But now there's a bit more. So now this pretty much answers the question of finding the running totals and group them by sex. Now we can actually play around with uh, the rows and range, uh, the framing a little bit more. There's a bit more detail with it. So what you can do is, instead of saying rows between unbounded preceding and current row, because what that means is, let's say if I'm in, I'm, I'm on row number three, Hassini, um, rows unbounded preceding is everything beforehand, and the current row is Hassini, which is row three. That's the frame, right? So we can we can play with that frame by doing between one preceding and one following. Let's run that query. What we have now is let's look at the first query, Amanda, salary 5,000, running total is 11,000. What happened here? One preceding is null, one preceding means one before, there's nothing there. One following is 6,000, five plus six, 11, 11,000. So if you go to Hassini, that's the 6,000 here, 7,000, 9,000, 22,000. So we started making a more restricted frame within the window. And if we go to Rashmi, again, the last record within the within the uh, window for the for the partition female, you will notice that 10,000, one preceding is 9,000, and one following is 1,000. All to that together is 20,000, but that's not here. Here is 19,000. Reason being is that since the framing only only works within the window that it's operating in, so this record is in the window of uh, partition by female. So it will not. It, so one following is actually null because it doesn't go here. Proceeding only ninety thousand. So I hope that made uh, a little bit of sense, and I hope you can start to see now some capabilities of using this window functions for like analytic purposes. That's a quick basic showing. Let's go back to the. Um, let's go back to the presentation. I might move through a few things here a bit quickly, guys, just because I'm I'm wary of time. Okay, like I said, uh, difference between rows and range. Um, uh, just real simply put, rows is the duplicate values involved. Uh, they'll treat them as separate separate rows. Separate values. Range is seen as one entity for duplicative values. That's basic understanding. Um, types of window functions. There's aggregate ranking and analytic functions. Aggregate functions are, I'm sure you guys are familiar with. It's your like average, count, min, and max. Uh, sorry, let me. Apologies. Let me get the point out. Yeah. Um, you know, count, min, and max. Um, I'm sure you guys have used that plenty of times when you have written uh, group by clauses. Um, and some of you might be thinking, why would you do partition by not group by? What's what's the big difference here? There's actually quite a big difference with group by. What you would notice is that when you get your result in set, the rows collapse onto each other. And generally speaking, that might not be what you want always. You might want to see the details. So you might want to, when I say details, I mean each column and then having each row having a aggregate value per row. You can get that with window functions. So group by doesn't give you that. Um, now, um, yeah, so aggregate functions, uh, I'm sure you guys have seen that, seen, uh, used them plenty. Um, these two examples are here, these two queries. Left hand side, I have, I have, uh, aggregate function average 
used within subqueries, and I have the same aggregate function within, used within a window function. Both these uh, queries get the exact same result set. Um, let me show it to you guys. Hold on. Yeah, so basically, I'm using this table here called films. It's uh, just six records, nothing much, right? It's a tiny table. Uh, basically, it's represent each row is representative of a, like a, of a movie. And uh, the release here, the category, so, you know, horror, action, whatever it may be, one can be horror, that's representative, and then the rating for the movie, right? So very, very simple, uh, uh, simple example here. Now, what I want to showcase to you, I'm going to show you this two earlier queries that we were looking at, where one was, give it, they were both given the exact same result set, uh, but one was using uh, uh, subqueries, which is this one over here, right? Subquery option. And the other one is the window function option, both of which, both of which give you the exact same result set, right? So you can see right here, they both have the exact same result set. Uh, basically, I'm doing an average on the rating for the year and then the average for the rating for the category, right? Nothing crazy. Um, so now, when people see this, they can, they, they notice one thing obviously is that, yeah, it seems more concise, the window function pathway when you write the code, and it is. Uh, the other thing they think about is, which one performs better? Performance-wise, what's better here? Let's look into that. So set statistics time IO on. This is a just a command. I'm sure you all I'm sure you all may have seen this once or twice. It's um, just gives you gives you information on what is uh, how many logical reads are going on and uh, the CPU time that's running for these queries. Uh, this table is very tiny, like I showed you. It's just six records. So CPU wise, we're not going to see any difference. Um, so this over here is the traditional SQL, so subquery option. This over here is the is the window function option. Right. So you will notice that. Apologies, we can hear the commotion from the road. Sorry for that. Uh, what you will notice is that logical reads are significantly less in the, not significantly less, but less in the traditional SQL where you use uh, subqueries compared to the window function option. And just to, so we're all on the same page, one logical read equals to about one eight kilobyte of a data page, or one eight kilobyte uh, page, and that's read in memory, right? So 26 pages, are, 26 logical reads are needed, 26 pages is needed for uh, traditional SQL, and about 52 in so 52 in total are needed for uh, window functions. Now, you might tell me, just judging from this, the traditional SQL is more, it's it's better. It runs it runs quicker. Now you're not entirely wrong. My argument to that personally is, obviously now looking at this, these are very small numbers. They're both very fast. But in in a, let's say they were bit more of a drastic difference. My argument to this would be the traditional SQL path is better if you're, if you're in an environment that has higher memory pressure. If you were in an environment that had, um, let's say, high contention, like a lo lot of lock-in happening, a lot of, um, uh, yeah, let's say a lot of lock-in, a lot of contention, I would then say the window function option is a lot better for you because two logical reads are done on the film table whereas 50 of the logical reads are done on a work table. A work table is a table in tempdb. So for, if our environment has a lot of lock-in issues and not much tempdb contention, the window function option might be better. If you have tempdb contention or if you have memory pressure, then you could go with the um, traditional SQL option, which is subqueries here in this case. Uh, but yeah, keep in mind, both these are running really well. Uh, personally, I think just running this is much simpler and it's also easy to read and understand what's going on. When you read this query, you are able to able to easily understand and know what you're trying to do rather than seeing every subquery here. But, but each their own, anyways. Um, okay, that's a quick thing I want to show about performance between the between these two functions. 
Uh, okay, quickly with time. Uh, ranking functions, uh, as you know, uh, it's very, it's, you, you can imagine what they means. These are functions that you can use, functions you can use to, uh, for positional or to rank records in a uh, window. Uh, row number is one of my favorite window function, uh, functions to use in a window function because it's very versatile and both my use cases, I'm going to show you in just a bit, my real world use cases, use row number. And I think it's widely used. It's, I think it's very useful. Basically what it does is it puts a number, it, it identifies the record as row number one, row number two, three, four, five, six. That might not sound very useful, but believe me, there's a lot of use cases you can use for that. Analytic functions are, um, as you can assume, they use for analytic purposes. Uh, here we have lag and lead. lead. Uh, to put it simply, lag is every value that was in the previous record. Lead is in the uh, values in the in the following record. This column here is previous for the lag. This oh, sure, you can't see my pointer. This column over here is for uh, lag. This column here is for lead. You can notice in the first first record here, I use lag, and it doesn't get gets now because there's no records before that. The next, so if I go to the second record, it gets 814. Right, because that's the previous uh, value, and vice versa, same for the uh, lead. I'm going to quickly go through this because I want to get to the use cases. Now, benefits of window functions, uh, as I said, they're easy to read syntax. Uh, when you do get the hang of it, they're a bit more easier to read than your, uh, you know, than a common table expression or than a um, subquery. Uh, it does not require group buys. It, they show the details, like I mentioned as well, so they don't collapse data when you. Uh, when you execute it, like a group, uh, how a group by would, you can actually see each record by itself, which is really cool. Um, encourage you to set base operations, which normally runs for better queries. And also it saves you with coding as well in terms of time, because it's quicker, you can you can write it quicker. Uh, this is a quick example I want to show with uh, the differences in, um, you know, the different tools we have, like in SQL Server, we have CTEs and subqueries, like I mentioned. Over here, these all these three queries, all these three SQL code blocks, give you the exact same uh, result set here. This one over here is obviously a CTE. This is the subquery option, and on the bottom left is the window function option. And this is just to drive home the point that it's just so much more convenient and concise using the window function option. But like I said before, they might perform slightly differently in different ways, uh, depending on your environment you should go with what's best for your environment. Um, now, indexing guidelines for window functions. Um, so when you when you run your window functions, if you look at the execution plan, you'll, norm, you'll normally notice there'll be a sorting operator. Uh, that is due to the uh, partition by clause or the ordering clause that's within the over clause of the window function. If you want to, you know, reduce that and Reduces because sorting operations are very CPU intensive, and not always, but they can be. Um, the way you can actually fight that is not to your traditional uh, indexes that you would normally create, where you have, um, you know, the where clause in the in index key and just everything else, you know, or the join clause or the join column. It's a bit different. Uh, the author of this book, it's uh, it's it's Ken. He um, create this topic called POC indexes, this concept. Uh, it stands for partitioning, ordering, and covering. Basically, the gist of it is you can see the in this, uh, this syntax I have at the bottom of here, the on the bottom. Basically, in the, it's the same thing, create index, index name, on table name. In the table, in the index key, you put the partitioning column and the ordering column, and then you follow with the include with, you know, whatever you need to cover in the included columns. Um, you, if if there is a where clause in the uh, in the select query with the window function, you would prioritize the window the where clause as the first column, and then that's followed by the partition column, and then that's followed by the ordering column. Uh, real world use cases, I have two here that I just want to show you guys real quickly before I wrap things up. Um, right, so removing duplicates, I'm sure. Women duplicates has you, we have all faced at, at least once. There's many ways you can handle it. Um, with uh, one way I 
I'd like to use is window functions. Um, let me quickly show it to you. Give me two seconds, guys. Just got to set up the data. There we go. And that should be right. So uh, this is just, uh, you know, each record here represents a order. Uh, this is just ordering from this is just order details. Uh, now there's duplicates in this table. This table has 855 records. There's duplicates in the record. There's duplicates in the table. Let me just quickly check something. Just two seconds, guys. Yeah, perfect. All right. So an example of one duplicate is uh, this table. This uh, with order ID of 10,250. As you can see, there's two records here, with, and they're exactly the same. Now we don't want that, right? Because yeah, we don't want duplicated records in production data or wherever this may be. Now, how do we go about removing and how do we go about identifying the duplicates? And then how do we go about removing them? It's a two step process. So first we'll think about identifying the duplicates. So we can run the, we can run the, we can use a row number uh, clause. I told you this is one of my favorites. Uh, what we're doing is we're going to partition the data by order ID. Why we partition the data by, data by order IDs? Because we're going to group up the the order ID uh, values. Because if there's if there's duplicates, we're going to group them, and then we're going to give each of those. So that'll be a window, right? If there'll be additional values in if there's if there's duplicates, there'll be uh, let me show you. I'm not doing a good job explaining that by words. Uh, for example, 10,250, as we saw earlier. One, uh, there's two records of it. This is one window. So that means row number will go one and then two. It will number the duplication greater than one. And if there's several more, so let's scroll down. Uh, here we are. 10,300 has three records, so there are three duplicate, there's three of the three duplicates, and then row number will, in that window, specify one, two, and three. Right, so now we have identified what uh, records are duplicated, and now how do we go about deleting them? Well, it's quite simple at this point. We just know that now to delete the duplicate records, we delete any num, we delete the records with uh, n greater than one. So we create a CTE, add the Window function, window function query within the CTE, and then write delete from CTE where n is greater than one. Doing so, uh, ex uh, deletes about 25 records. And if I go back to this uh, table and have a look, there's only one record left over. So it's a pretty simple, a quick way to do it. Um, and yeah, so that's one quick way you can use uh, window functions. And then for my last example, let me quickly show you guys the next slide. Paging. Uh, I'm sure we're all familiar what paging is. It's a uh, common in many applications. Basically, you know, for an end user, you don't want them to see, you don't want to return a million records to them because obviously that's quite, you know, returning a million records to the UI is a bit, you know, it's who, who, who wants to see that many records on one screen. Um, so you can break that down into like 25 records or 20 records or 30 or 50. That's paging. So you can use uh, window functions in that case as well. Uh, sorry, here we are. <clears throat> so I created a, uh, I created a index to speed up the process. Just let me check this there. Yeah, perfect. All right. So basically, this is the code that uh, that we can use to do paging. Basically, I've created two variables, page number, page size. These can be inputted on the fly. Here it's hard coded. Uh, so the third page and the, the each page is uh, 25 records. I believe there's again 830 records in this table. Yep, 830 records. And um, now what I'm so what I did was I numbered each record. So you can see row number here. Each record is numbered one to 830. And then what I did was I put into a CTE again, and then I selected each. I selected each column <clears throat> from the CTE where row number between. Um, this is a quick calculation to get the 25 records that are on the whatever page that I specified. So in this case, 
if I put page one, I should see the records on page from row one to 25, which I do. So it's one, one to 25. If I wanted to see the third page, you put third page there. Now you'll see 51 to 75. So, so on and so on. You can justify, you can you know, change the parameters however you want, and you will get your paging. So these are two quick, and again, I use row number here as well. So you can see how useful row number is when it comes to uh, use cases. Um, there's many use cases in you can use window functions for. You can get very creative. That's a really cool thing about window functions. That's why I really like it. You it shows a bit of create. You can be a bit creative with how you uh, with how you want to do things because there's so many different types of window fu window functions that you can use, and it really uh, changes the way you write code, write your TE SQL sometimes. So I, I really like it for that reason. Um, and obviously, I've shown you guys already running totals. We have gone through a few examples of that already. Um, sorry for making this quick, guys. I just didn't want to take. I just wanted everybody to you. Know, I know it's uh, it's getting quite late here as well on my side. So I wanted to make this a bit quick. Uh, thanks for listening, and thank you, Piao, and thank you, Asif, for you know organizing this event. Sorry for dropping out halfway through. And sure. uh, if you guys want to follow me on uh, Twitter or check out my blog, it's a bit dry at the moment, but I'm working on it. And email me and give me any feedback at all. I'm looking to improve. If you wanted better examples, if you wanted more in depth in a certain area, if you think I rambled on on a certain on a topic that wasn't that on a certain part that wasn't that good, please let me know. I'm looking to improve. Yeah, thank you thank for your time. Uh, it was really nice session. I have one question. Uh, yes, like, yes, question. Uh, yes, question. Yeah, yeah. yeah actually, uh, I mean, like, do you suggest any Windows function which is good for doing a statical analysis uh, or something related to that? Like, oh. like uh, suppose if I want to, like, how you showed the example of the my following the my orders. And yeah. If we want to do something related to ranking in terms of percentile or in terms of you know ordering yes. or doing some statistical analysis on that. Yes. Or yes. There is. There are. There are actually ranking functions that are designed specifically for that pur purpose. I believe it's called a uh, pers. Hold on. Let me quickly check it out. Hi guys, uh, you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And there is also, uh, I think my colleague have already uh, put the feedback URL. Uh, so please help to provide a feedback. So it will help us to improve the session. So please help to provide a feedback. Yeah. Yeah, I believe you could use a percentile continue and percentile discount, a disc and percent rank for those statistical purposes. Uh, I have to do a bit more work onto those, uh, but. Yeah, I, I, this might be useful. This might be useful for your for those purposes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Shane. No worries. Yeah, I think the 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 developers on the call appreciate uh, Windows Function very much, because that's the that's the uh, that's actually the purpose of Windows Function. It's not more for performance, but for simplifying your T SQL mm -hmm. query. Yeah. All of those items that the window function can do, you can do it in a very complex uh, sub query or a CTE. Very but true. the problem is it's going to take a long time to code, or very for true. some, it's very hard to define the logic and it's prone to error. That's very true. That's, that's the beauty. Yeah, of exactly. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions to the, to the room? Anyone uh, has it? I think uh, we don't have. Uh, if you have, hey guys, if you have any questions, so you can uh, reach out of us and any of our colleague, or maybe you can also email to Shane. Uh, he already yes. shared his email. Yes. And uh, our actually, uh, we are planning to have our next session in uh, next two weeks. Most probably will be 11th of February. Uh, so yeah, means, uh, we will announce soon. And uh, yeah, that's for today. Uh, Pierre, you have any uh, announcement or anything? Uh, no, I just wanted to go on camera to say hi to Shane. <laughs> okay, I, thanks everyone. I, thanks I, for uh, Net staying late Shane. today. I think the last, the last, been... the last in-person sequel Saturday. Right? Yeah, before, <laughs> yeah, COVID, yeah. Hit. before, before COVID, COVID hit. Before yeah. COVID hit. Yeah, <laughs> so, it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So I think that's that's all for tonight. Thank you for uh, spending your night uh, with us. And thank you, Shane and Nagaraj. Yeah, thanks everyone. No problem. Thank you for the session. Thank you for the thank you for organizing the meetup. See you everybody. Good night.